Hello everybody. This video is going to focus on a specialty of mine, which is king and pawn endgames end or endings. Uh, in over the board standard chess, I don't believe I've ever lost a king and pawn endgame. Uh, and I've, I think I've won practically all of them, so I do seem to have a knack for these. So hopefully I can uh, show you a position for one of my games, which is useful. Here, who's winning? Well, I haven't actually told you whose move it is yet, so uh, would it would it change based on whose move it is? Well, in King and Pawn Endgames, two very important features come up. One is pawn structure, and one is king position. And it's sometimes tricky to know which is the most important. If the pawn structure is very static and uh, not going to change, then the, you, as you can't change it, then the king position becomes hugely important. Other times... You might have a very, very bad pawn structure, and you only have a moment or two to repair it before uh, before it's too late. So then the pawn structure becomes more important. Uh, but overall, both of them are factors here. So if it was black's turn to move, what would you play as black? Yeah, the easiest way to win here is king g6. And then, pretty much no matter what white does, you play king h5, king 8 takes h4, king takes g5, and you'll be a pawn up and can quite easily win this. And white's king is all the way on a1, so it's, it's hardly active here. Uh, and this is white to move, so is black still completely winning, or does white have uh, a way of perhaps drawing, or, or, or more? Well, here, white can play h5, and this is what I played in the game. And here, now, the black king can't uh, infiltrate to h4 and then grab the two pawns. So, with black to move, how do you evaluate this position? Uh, who do you think is winning, or do you think it's drawn? Well, let's have a look at the pawn structure. There's an equal number of pawns on the board. Uh, black has uh, five pawns on the, let's say, queen side, even though I know the e6 pawn isn't technically on the queen side. But we'll call this island of uh, five pawns here the queen side pawns. And white has four pawns on the queen side. So black has five to four, so a pawn majority over there. And white has two to one on the king side, let's call it. And one thing that's important is when you're trying to create a passed pawn, uh, the ratio of pawns to either side uh, is it's stronger, the sort of bigger the difference is. Five to four is, uh, you know, is a very small advantage. It's 25% uh, more. Uh, than uh, your opponent. If you have five, they have four. Uh, or oh, 20% more. Sorry, my maths is uh, going out the window today. Uh, but white has two to one, so twice as many pawns as black does on the king side. So that could be a factor here. And generally, there's a concept called the outside past pawn, where you can create an out where you can create a pass pawn which is away from the rest of the activity of uh, on the chessboard and the enemy king will have to run after us and take it and then the king will be kind of offside or be far away from the rest of the action and the other king can then uh, you know do what what he does and uh, maybe take a bunch of pawns on the other wing of the board so here what is black's plan Well, first, it's just to get e5 
uh, under under control and perhaps sack the pawn on e5. That could be a plan. Uh, is that is that a good move? Well, let's see. Uh, white takes. Black takes. And here, uh, what white can do is simply play g6. And unless uh, unless black wants to have play, play h6, and then white will have a protected pass pawn on g6 for all time, uh, black's king will be confined to the corner, and white can simply hoover up all the queenside pawns. So black takes... And here, there's quite a nice way to win with h6. So, again, it's not a game of draft, so you can just ignore the capture and go for promotion on h8. Black needs to stop it. But now, e6 check. And here, black would probably resign, because any move uh, the king makes will allow another pawn, one of the pawns to promote. So, let's say king f6 h7, g7, e7. Uh, the black king's been uh, sort of having to stretch, and he can't quite stretch far enough to capture the two pawns. So e5 can't be played in this position. What about instead king to d6? So the idea here is play king d6, then e5, and he can capture the pawn immediately. Well, let's see how that turns out for him. Uh, if we play h6, going for king here, g6, and then we'll uh, have a pass pawn that will win, what's wrong with h6? Well, yeah, the king can just come back around now and go to g6 and then take on g5 and win. So pawn structure here is more important. So let's just play king b1. King d6, king c2. So, actually, no, not king c2, sorry, wrong variation. Here we could just play g6 again. And if black takes, white can play h6. And the king isn't quite fast enough to stop the pawns. So here, what we've established is that the king... The king can't actually step out of a whole quarter of the board, uh, the, with the corners being at e5, e8, h8, h5. The king has to stay in this box, and uh, that way it will avoid the pawns running up and promoting. So here, the king is confined, and he doesn't have any successful pawn breaks. So black might just have to be content moving the king around, and white doesn't need to move the pawns. He can just increase his king's activity. And black now might want to try something on the queen side. But here, it's I think it's impossible for black to actually you know, force a pawn through. So we don't need to be too concerned about the queen side. We can just keep running up with the king. King f7, let's say. King f4. And after king e7, king e5, what would you play if black played a4 here? Well, if you said g6, I, I get it, it's interesting, h takes h6, king here, h7, but after g7 and perhaps if you were to uh, do some move somewhere, uh, black could actually have a dangerous g-pawn here. So perhaps hold off for a moment. Uh, what about, what if you took the pawn? Is that, is that good? Because you're, you're getting an extra passed pawn. Well, not to dwell on it too much, because that will be the subject of the next video, but black has a pawn break here. Black can play a3. 
And now, after you move the B pawn, let's say take, black has a clear path with the pawn on C3. And here, white could resign. So instead, if you were to do nothing, if you were to just move the king, black has... What does black... What can black play here to win? Again, black can play a3. And if we move the b-pawn, black plays b takes c3, uh, possibly here. Uh, I might, no, wait, sorry, no, the king's gone over, sorry. If, <coughs> sorry, if b takes a3, black has b3, and now after white takes, black takes, our king is just outside the box, can't catch up to black's pawn. And if b3 was played, then again, c takes, a takes, a2, and black will win. So the only way to stop it is to play a3 ourselves, and no matter what black does, we'll either recapture with the pawn or we just don't need to worry. So if b3, everything's closed up, and if he takes, we take. So here... Now, how does white win in this position? Well, white wins by doing what I mentioned earlier. We create the outside pass pawn, so g6. And again, if black doesn't take, white will have a protected pass pawn on g6 forever, uh, and that will certainly win. So black will take, white takes, and now the king has to give ground. So king f8, king takes e6. Let's say, for the sake of argument, white doesn't protect the pawn, uh, because here uh, there's, there isn't a way to force uh, a win with just the king and pawn. You have to work on the queen side. So now, because the king is chasing after g6, we can use the outside pass pawn uh, to distract the black king and now just hoover up the queen side. And here, black can just resign. Four pawns up is is, is good enough to win. <laughs> so uh, here, just to quickly do an overview of the position, what mattered most here was the pawn structure at the beginning because black was threatening to use his king very effectively. And after h5, because of the potential outside pass pawn, black couldn't activate any plan on the queen side. He couldn't use the majority of pawns. So here, once white has improved his pawn structure as much as possible, it then just becomes a question of improving the king. And as long as you... You still need to watch out for pawn breaks, tactics, other features of the position, but it was quite a simple plan, really. Just bring our king up as much as we can, Make sure black doesn't have any sneaky uh, tricks to win. And then create the outside pass pawn. So in some ways, king and pawn endgames can be very, very simple. And in other ways, they can be incredibly difficult. So I hope you took something away from this video. Uh, comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.